everybody to know all about nano science and technology so knowing the fact that now you guys are well aware of basics of nanotechnology through our previous videos today let's enter into the new domain of nanotechnology that is its synthesis and fabrication part so without any further delay let's start with our today's video so firstly let's understand the basic difference between the terms synthesis and fabrication Synthesis refers to producing a complex compound using simple compounds whereas fabrication refers to joining the compounds or structures. So now firstly let's understand about nanofabrication what is it and how is it implement, implemented. So nanofabrication is the manufacture of materials with nanometer dimensions or you can just say as Nanofabrication is the manufacture of nanomaterials or even you can describe nanofabrication as production of nanoscale materials and devices. This nanofabrication process involves different techniques by which we can manufacture different types of nanomaterials. Basically nanofabrication methods can be classified into two groups that is top down and bottom up approaches. Then what are these approaches? Let's have a look at both of them. Top down approach is the conventional approach in which a bulk material is sliced or cut down until it reaches the size of nanoparticles. Whereas bottom up approach refers to a method where atoms and molecules get rearranged and assembled to form larger nano structures. So as you can see in this picture, this is a bulk material. So if you want to convert this bulk material into nanoparticles, then what you have to do is obviously you have to cut this bulk material into smaller parts or pieces until you gain the size of nanoparticles. So this is known as top down approach that is you go from bigger to smaller whereas bottom up is the exactly opposite. So you start with atoms and molecules and then start rearranging them and reassembling them so that you get larger sized nanoparticles. So this is known as bottom up. So in this you go from smaller to larger. So now I think with this diagram you are able to understand what is top down and bottom up approach. So moving on further techniques that make use of this top down approaches are patterning methods like lithography, sputtering, ablation, evaporation, mechanical grinding or even milling, sonification. Whereas techniques that make use of this bottom up approaches are chemical vapor deposition which is also known as CVD, atomic layer deposition again which is also known as ALD, self assembly, crystal growth, biological methods. Now for now you people just remember the techniques and in our coming upcoming videos we'll have elaborate explanation of each of this technique but for now you just remember the techniques and which falls under which category now both these approaches offer some of its advantages and disadvantages so advantages offered by top down approach are first large scale production is possible second no need of chemical purification Whereas advantages of bottom up approach are deposition parameters can be controlled and nanostructures with less defects are formed and also this method is very cost effective. That means it is less, uh, less expensive or you can say it is cheaper method. Now the disadvantages. So disadvantages of top down method are firstly deposition parameters cannot be controlled which can be controlled in bottom up method. Second, defects and imperfections are introduced in nanostructures. Again, which cannot be found in the bottom up method. Now, disadvantages of bottom up method are nanoparticles formed need to be purified chemically. Whereas nanoparticles formed in uh, top down method, uh, there is no need to purify them chemically. The second disadvantage is large scale production is difficult whereas large scale production is possible with top down approach 
So this was all about nanofabrication. Now let's turn to synthesis of nanoparticles. Talking about synthesis, there are different routes involved in it. Mainly there are three main routes by which nanoparticles can be synthesized. They are physical route, chemical route and biological route. Again as we uh, saw in the nanofabrication part, there were different techniques and different approaches involved in this uh, like the same part. Uh, in synthesis also there are different techniques involved. So as we said there are three main routes physical, chemical and biological for the synthesis of nanoparticles. So talking about physical again it can be divided into two methods. First is mechanical method and second is method uh, using evaporation. So in mechanical method we have ball milling and melt mixing whereas methods using evaporation uh, content techniques like physical vapor deposition that is PVD, laser abrasion, laser pyrolysis, ion beam technique, molecular beam epitaxy and sputter deposition. Whereas the different techniques involved in chemical route are colloidal method, Langmuir blockade method, sol gel method, hydrothermal method, sonochemical method and microwave synthesis. Whereas the techniques used in biological route are synthesis using microorganisms, synthesis using plant extract, synthesis using proteins and synthesis using templates like DNA and S layers. Again for now you people just remember the different techniques of synthesis and which technique comes under which category and in our coming uh, upcoming videos we will have elaborate explanation of each of the technique. Again, each of this technique has its own advantages and disadvantages. Then you may ask, out of all these techniques, which is the best one and which should be preferred for the synthesis of nanomaterials? Then let me tell you that the technique to be used for synthesis depends upon the type of the material that is zero dimensional, one dimensional or two dimensional nanomaterials, size of nanomaterial, quantity and material of interest. For example, if you want to synthesize thin films, which are basically two-dimensional nanomaterials, then you will compulsory have to make use of physical root because you cannot synthesize thin films using chemical root and biological root. Whereas if your aim is to produce large amount of nanoparticles, that is if you want larger yield of nanomaterials, then you will have to go with chemical roots because with biological roots, large scale production is not possible whereas if you are looking for some eco-friendly way or some uh, cheaper uh, ways to synthesize nanoparticles then obviously you will have to go with biological methods because with chemical synthesis there will be issue of toxicity and uh, uh, chemical and physical are not the eco-friendly way so this is how it all works and I think now you guys are clear with different techniques of synthesis and fabrication of nanomaterials. So that was all for today's video and now it's time to end our video. But before ending, if you found it helpful, then do like and share this video. And very importantly, subscribe to this channel to discover more such interesting concepts of nanotechnology. And to get notified about new videos, hit the bell icon. Okay then. Until next time, keep learning and be happy. Mm -hmm.